against the backdrop of rigid, age-old traditions and a uniquely progressive school, The Backward Class is a feature documentary which captures the hopeful stories of 12th grade untouchable caste students in India through the turbulence of final exams, graduation, and general coming of age. Anoki Pulse TV speaks to director and producer Madeline Grant about her inspirations for creating this feature, her experience working with underprivileged students in India, and how the Shanti Bhavan School is a social experiment that proves the power of education. The Backward Class is somewhat of an educational experiment. And what I love about this is there's been a lot of documentaries and a lot of talk about the education of children, but this actually goes right into that classroom. It shows how these students and how these children are being educated by the system and what sort of initiatives have been put in place. So describe how that sort of began with the Backward Class. What really inspired me about Shanti Bhavan, the school where we filmed the Backward Class, was that it was this very hopeful story. And I'd had wonderful experiences in India and in particular at this school. These kids were so inspiring to me. When I first met them, they were, you know, from three years old up until the 10th grade, and they're these very articulate, engaging individuals, and they're aspiring to be everything from astronauts through to physicists, doctors, what have you. Then you visit their home villages and you realize where they're coming from, and it's shocking. That disparity is just so big. It really struck me at that time, having grown up in Canada, um, what a privilege it was to have the education that I'd received here and that what these students were embodying was really a global story that anyone can relate to. That idea that if you're given the opportunity you can succeed. How has the progress been for these students who have been part of the Shanti Baba School? So far it's been really wonderful. I mean their parents can't really afford to keep them and so uh, at the school they get all the basics of uh, nutrition and they sleep there. It's a boarding school and then schooling as well so it's a home life as well as an academic life. They get a really wonderful education. They do the ISC curriculum uh, in high school. There have been many success stories that are coming out of the school that are going on to top level universities and now working at multinational corporations like Goldman Sachs, Ernst & Young, Mercedes-Benz and that's wow. such a huge shift from um, where their parents are and the students themselves in five years at their entry level positions will make more than their parents would have made in a lifetime. It's so powerful listening to you say all this because you really do realize the power of an education which most of these children are stripped of just because of the family that they've been born into. How challenging was it for you to start with this hope about getting these children educated and then actually being part of that experience? I didn't go to India planning on making the film. The first time I went to India and the first time I visited the school, I was there as a volunteer. My sister and I were on an eight-month trip and she's a teacher and so she'd found Shanti Bhavan online and it was one of the rare volunteer opportunities that seemed like an actually effective volunteer opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we went there and then as soon as I visited the school I realized what an amazing story it was and I thought to myself that no one else is telling this story. It's a story that's really close to my heart and I will regret it for the rest of my life if I don't try to film something with these students because there's something really beautiful going on uh, at this school. One thing that the film beautifully captured was this juxtaposition between rigid old world values and just how the younger generation thinks. Where do you think that dichotomy came into play when it came to the education of these children? And so the founder of the school, Dr. George, was a Carolite actually. He grew up in Kerala and uh, moved to the U.S., made a lot of money and wanted to give back. And so he started the school in Tamil Nadu along with some other um, projects. He did a lot of research and worked with several other administrators and it was really important to them to provide a full uh, home environment for the student. I think they were preparing them to be global citizens and so wow. they encouraged uh, volunteers to come so that the students would be comfortable meeting foreigners and people of all different types with different jobs and different interests. They followed um, the Indian ISC syllabus, but at the same time they had volunteers from different countries who would also offer their perspectives on the subject. Generally really enforced a very uh, open environment, how to deal with things like physical abuse, sexual abuse, alcohol issues, clean water, making sure to wear shoes. Everything that these children might encounter at home was discussed in a very open and uh, empathetic manner. I think that idea of openness expanded into all aspects of the school.